The way we express the love of Jesus Christ and the passion that he had is that we go out there and we serve others. We go to the out of bound places, the ends of the earth. The world is changing, but the gospel doesn't change. The message of the cross doesn't change. We're gonna make every effort to share the gospel. The world has been decimated by COVID-19, but the work here at Samaritan's Purse, it never stops. No greater need and no greater time than right now for us to go out and serve boldly in the name of Jesus Christ. And we do it through Operation Christmas Shop. It's a platform that God has given Samaritan's Purse to share the gospel more than 10 million times every year. Jesus loves you. The wonderment of it is that the child's encounter is not with material things. By faith, the encounter is with things unseen, and they're receiving that for the very first time. All right, that's our, your reminder for Operation Christmas Child. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm John Exman, pastor here at Central Trinity. Uh, good to see everybody this morning. Have a great uh, worship service coming. Just a couple of quick announcements. Um, one, my wife wanted to share that we're having our first big uh, children's uh, family event. It's a family fun night. It's October the 24th. It's in the parking lot here um, from 6 to 8. There's going to be Trunk or Treat. There's going to be uh, a movie shown on the giant blow-up screen that we have. Uh, pumpkin painting, a lot of food and fun. Uh, a lot of people pitching in and groups in the church helping out. And so we'd love to have uh, a big crowd for that. So if you could, there's, a bu there's two stacks of these out there uh, in the narthex. If you could grab some of them and uh, spread them around maybe or give some to your neighbors. Or if you have a place you know where you could put one up uh, at a business, that'd be great too. Because we'd love to have uh, a big crowd for the kids and have a fun time for that. And even if you don't have kids to bring, bring your own kid yourself and uh, still load up that trunk and we'll have a good time passing out candy for the young people of our community. Um, also, real quick, uh, there is no uh, um, youth group tonight for the kids, and then there's no um, Bible study tomorrow night for those that have been going to the Bible study at the Downings. Uh, and I think that was all the announcements uh, that I had. And so I have one more from Darren Talbot, and he's going to give you a quick announcement here, and then we'll get started with our worship this morning. Um, I'm Darren Talwood. I'm the chairman of the Stewardship and Finance Committee, and I usually come forward, you know, once a year to talk about things that people usually don't like to discuss with each other and everything. So, Consecration Sunday is upcoming uh, on October 31st this year. Uh, every church in our uh, district is going to have Consecration Sunday on the same day, so everybody's going to be consistent across the board. We're going to be mailing out our estimate of giving cards uh, to everybody this week, and we'll also have some here in the church as well over the next few weeks. Um, the 31st is, will be the day that we you know, make our promise to God of what we will consider um, to do in the upcoming years to support the church and the missions of the church. So I trust all of you will, uh, will consider that. You know, basically I have three things I just want to ask that you do for me. Uh, first and most importantly is just pray for the consider what you'll do uh, next year to support the church, its missions, and the other things that we need to do here to support the church. Second of all, I want to invite you to come for the next couple of Sundays. Uh, to share John's messages that are going to be related to giving. And third, you know, I'd like you to come on the 31st when we will come up and, and make that pledge to God of what we will do to support the church in the upcoming year. Um, if you are uncomfortable, if you're watching from home or about coming in, you know, you'll be able to mail these in, so they will be mailed out to everybody in the church. So thank you for all that you do, and God bless. Good morning, church. Our opening hymn can be found on page 529, How Firm a Foundation. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 3. Would you please stand? Thank you. 
would you please remain standing for our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be seated. Our prayer hymn this morning can be found on page 142. If thou but suffer God to guide thee, we will sing verse 3. We're going to take just a few moments uh, this morning, and you can spend a few silent moments with God, and then we'll uh, pray together this morning. Gracious Father, we come before you and share in... Uh, a moment of prayer, a moment of reading your word and hearing your word, and moments of singing and song, moments of special music, and moments of liturgy, Father, as we repeat the words that so many have repeated uh, over time, and the meaning that those bring to us as we share in the the creeds and the prayers of our church. And we do that, Father, because it, it connects us, it binds us together, it gives us strength, and it gives us courage to uh, face the future knowing that when we speak, we speak uh, and share in one voice as one church. And there's so much beauty in that, Father. So I ask that as we do that each and every Sunday, you give us the courage to go out into the world that we live in, to share your word, to share uh, the words that mean so much to us, and to give those uh, to others so that it might mean so much to them. And we do that this morning as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you, choir. That was beautiful this morning. Caitlin, was that you on the high note? <laughs> it was Sandra, wasn't it? There you go. That one, that was really good. I, I couldn't hit that one unless someone came up here and maybe jammed on my toe right before I did it, but that's beautiful. And it's so great, too, to have the kids singing along uh, as well. Uh, special special music is always all the more special when we sing it all together, so that was great, guys. Thank you. Uh, we started, um, as Darren said, we started last week a series on uh, Do Not Be Afraid, and uh, the idea behind it is is uh, sometimes the world that we live in creates this spirit of, of fear in all different parts of life, and it's hard to be a part of that when, as a Christian, we're told, uh, do not be afraid again and again in Scripture. And so uh, I wanted to, to share that. Uh, let's see, yesterday, or Friday, because today's Sunday, i got to get that in my head. Uh, <laughs> Friday, uh, my family and I, um, right after uh, school, we got everybody ready, and we went down to um, the pumpkin patch farm there at Little Darby Creek. It's uh, right there by Plain City. It's a really nice one if you've uh, never been there. We've gone there quite a few years now. In fact, we were remarking how long we'd gone there that uh, usually we have two or three strollers uh, present at that one, but we only had one this time. And to be honest, my niece, is, who's grown up a little bit, uh, she didn't need the stroller. We mostly just put stuff in it. Uh, but uh, we were, you know, just having some fun, and uh, it uh, went. We went through the pumpkin patch too. But we also did all the little games that they have and everything. And uh, we always, the last thing we do is go through the pumpkin patch, uh, and you can get the pumpkins, and then we go out into the cornfield to go through the maze. And it's always really fun because it's a little bit dark, and you go through. But they always have like. Uh, little maps and things to so you can figure out which way that you're going well in my family the the fun thing to do is to try to hide in the corn and get ahead of everybody else and then scare whoever's coming uh, and I, I I did that one of those times uh, to uh, my daughter Alex and to my little five-year-old niece uh, Jesse and I jumped out and scared them and uh, my niece looked up at me and said Uncle John I am five now. That did not scare me. <laughs> she said, if you want to scare someone, go scare my mom, <laughs> who is my sister. And I did. <laughs> she didn't like it at all, though. She did jump, but my niece did not. Uh, because we g try to figure out what are the things that we're afraid of. So many times we go through life and we have everything that we're afraid of, right? It almost comes down to a sense of uh, what aren't we afraid of more than what we are afraid of. And uh, we've, we've got some scriptures related to this uh, that we're looking at this morning. If you uh, were here earlier this morning, uh, John preached in the um, first service this morning. He did a really good job preaching the, the same uh, scripture. And, uh, but it's interesting to see the little differences between uh, the two of us. But the scripture that we're looking at is Joshua 1, verses 1 through 9. And it's uh, that beginning story, which we shared part of it the other day, of, of uh, Moses and uh, Joshua getting ready to lead the people into the promised land. And it starts like this, if you want to put it up on the screen. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will, I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Now, did you catch the phrase that kept running through that three times? Be strong and courageous. It was repeated again and again. Uh, why? Because plainly, even back then they knew repetition breeds remembrance. And the more we repeat things, the more we remember them. And so here the scripture is saying a variation of do not be afraid. Remember I told you last week, those variations, if you add them all up, it basically comes out to 365, which are how many days we have in the year. And so this is one of those times again where God is saying, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. And there's a word in there that's used. And uh, as you're reading through it, maybe, maybe you saw it, uh, maybe you caught it, maybe it was fleeting and you didn't quite uh, focus on it. But it said this in verse 8. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. Now, meditate, that word, you know, we probably in today's w world think of things a little differently related to meditate than we would have years ago. But when I say meditate, what pops into your head? Right? Maybe a little bit of meditation where you're s focusing more on something else specific and ignoring the rest of the things in the world, right? Uh, you know, picture, you maybe picture someone sitting cross-legged, you know, on the floor with their and doing a little chanting. Uh, I bet you Twinkle Toes could do that. You'd do that good, wouldn't you, Joe? Uh, but, you know, I, I just like to tease him. He's, he's just such a great person to do that with because he takes it and then he gives it back. That's my favorite part about it. I'm going to get it later. So, uh, But, you know, you, you sit and you think and you meditate for just a moment on something that's important. Uh, and in Scripture... Meditate can be taken a different way, too, as in prayer. But the interesting take on that is the true meaning of the word, if you look it up, uh, in the Greek. And it kind of means, or it does mean, murmurs. And actually, the, uh, when I looked it up, the one that I found, John found murmurs, I found uh, utterance. Uh, utters, where things that you just utter. And so, basically, what it means is keep murmuring to yourself the book of the law and keep it always on your lips then you'll be prosperous and successful because you should be strong and courageous now think about that murmuring right now, i didn't say mumbling uh but murmuring if you caught someone murmuring what would you do you probably tell them to be quiet right how many of you maybe have a spouse or somebody in your family that is always that person that's kind of talking or mumbling under their breath, right? They're like having a conversation with themselves and you're, you're trying to hear that conversation, but at the same time you're like, shh, right? We all do that. Somebody, we do that sometimes. Sometimes we think that we're doing it quietly in our head, but then sometimes it's out loud for everyone to hear, right? But you got that murmur meditation now if we truly murmured the word of god day in and day in the night how much better would the world be how much more would we hear the words do not be afraid and know that they were true because we've focused so much on that scripture again and again, right? 
Because truthfully, what it should be is a constant murmur between you and God. Now, I'm not saying this, that, uh, you know, when your, uh, your wife comes into the room and says, uh, all right, turn the TV off, you know, it's time to eat or whatever, and you're just saying, leave me alone, I'm murmuring. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. Spend some time quietly meditating on the Word. Because there's so much in this little <clears throat> excerpt of what God is saying uh, to Joshua and remember, he had said it already three times, be strong and courageous. There's a phrase that that instantly made me think of. Uh, I'm a movie person. I love movies. You know that from the last few months. If you don't yet, you'll learn because there's so many that are my favorites because uh, preachers like to watch a lot of movies because we live so much in the real world, it's more fun to watch fantasy because the rest of your week and day and month is always the hard stuff of life. And I, I love uh, historical movies. I love uh, World War movies. I love any kind. Uh, knowing that my name is John Wayne, you know, so I should have some historical uh, things there. You can ask my mom and dad about that one. Uh, but I really love uh, some of the old uh, war-related movies as in uh, the Roman, the Romans and that type of era. And there's a movie that occurred uh, in the early 2000s, and it was called Gladiator. And it was based on uh, a made-up figure of history, but it was a combination of a bunch of different uh, characters in history. And they created this uh, general in the Roman army called Maximus. And R Russell Crowe famously uh, played that part and actually won an Academy Award for it and did a really fabulous job. And then uh, the bad guy in that uh, was the Emperor's or the Caesar's son, uh, Commodus, and that was Joaquin Phoenix. And he was great as well. If you watch that movie, Maximus, uh, the way they created him, because they took him again from all these uh, couple of figures in history, and they created this uh, person who had so much honor, so much strength, so much courage, that whenever he went with those around him and said, today we go into battle and know this, I'll be with you the whole way. And he did. He was that general out on the horse leading the charge into battle. He was not the one that stood back into the back. And as they were getting ready to go into battle, uh, these Roman army people had this phrase that they repeated. Now, I tried to look it up to see if it was something that occurred in real life, and I found a couple places that said that it was possibly like it, and some that said uh, it deviated from what was really said. But for the sake of today, the thing that he said was strength and honor. And he went to each person down the line as he got ready to go. And actually, it's one of the opening scenes in the movie. And you can hear the music and the tenseness because they're getting ready to go into battle. And he comes to each of his men and goes past them and says, strength and honor, strength and honor. They repeat it. It's their mantra. And really what he's saying there is a Latin phrase uh, virtuous et honos, and that means strength and honor. It's uh, the honor society motto of strength and honor was chosen to represent the attributes uh, of that organization. And so uh, honor is very important, but if you don't have strength to go along with it, what do you got? And so Russell Crowe, when he was studying this part, he wanted to have this phrase uttered because he wanted uh, people to understand what it is to follow a leader into battle, right? Now do you get where that's coming from? So strength and honor were what was said. And that then led them into the battle that they were coming against. There were principles, you see, that a person of honor follows. Joshua was like this. 
Moses had tried to be. But remember, what are we truthfully? The Bible tells us that we are all what? Sinners saved by grace. And so even though we might have the most honor and the most strength of any around us, the thing to remember the most is that God is the one who gives us that strength and honor, and it's not something that we obtain because of how wonderful we are. Right? So it doesn't matter who you are. What matters is in whom you believe. Now, I know. I've told you before, I'm an English teacher mother, so those phrasings are important, right? Words mean something. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Baloney, right? Words hurt. If you call someone a name or if you go against someone and say something to them, there's always a little bit of truth in there, even if you're just plain angry, right? We know that. So if you blow up, at someone you love and say something derogatory and then come back and say I'm sorry you are sorry but also you said it and once it comes out you can't reel it back in and so here we have those moments and God is saying to us here he's saying to us the warriors of truth the warriors of faith the warriors of the things that are most important if you want to know and meditate day and night on the spirit of the lord then you'll prosper and be successful now i don't mean prosper as in you're going to have piles of money and a great car to drive and live in the fabulous house and uh have the model for your husband or wife, right? But you're going to prosper in the sense that the Lord your God will be with you and you will know it because you will feel his presence. Now you might say to me, hey John, I can't feel God's presence. It's been a while since I've felt that. And I ask you, if it's been a while, how long has it been since you've read his word? Because that's where we get the strength from. I'm not saying it's not difficult. How many times have you in your life said, I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm going to spend the first 15 minutes with God. And then you wake up in the morning and you spend the first 15 minutes trying to make it to the bathroom to brush your teeth and to do all the things that you got to do, right? Then you say, well, I'm going to spend the last 15 minutes of every day with God. But your day was so long and tiring that as you lay your head down on the pillow and you start to meditate and murmur in the word, you just murmur off into sleep. And God says, what about me? Do you hear me? Do you feel me? And we have got to give ourselves to him. Related to that strong and courageous, the army has this ethos that they share, the military. It's called a warrior ethos, but it's so great for us as warriors of the faith as well. It says, I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. And I will never leave a fallen comrade behind. If we said those things and murmured those things in the truth and said, God, you love us so much. You are my God. And God says, I am. I am that God that you know and love. And then we say, we're going to fight for you because the battlefront today is everywhere. It's even in here, right? We need to know that the battle occurs in church just as much as it occurs anywhere else, sometimes even worse in church, because church people can often be the ones that throw out those words, and then they're like, no, i got to reel that back in and come back. I didn't mean to say that out there. I meant to say that, you know, at home by myself when I was meditating. <laughs> and that's where we live, right? Because we're sinners. And as people of love and faith, we sometimes hurt those that we love the most. And our Savior is saying, 
strength and honor. Strength and honor. Be strong and be courageous. Essentially, strength, which courage draws from the scriptures, meditation and then murmur on them. And then you know what honor is? It's our true character. Our true character, the qualities that make up who we are, that's honor. So when we go down the line with those that we want to do battle with, and I want to do battle with you, and you hopefully want to do battle with me because I'm telling you, Satan's drawn the line in the sand, and we either have to cross it, or I don't even know what else comes after that. But I say to you, strength and honor. Be strong. Be courageous. It doesn't matter where we go or what we're doing. What matters most is that we know that the one who loves us so much took that cross and made it as a symbol for you and for me. So that, that remembrance that we utter those murmurings that we hold in our heart, we will know that they are true because we can say, God loves me so much that he's going to lead me into battle, but he's also going to continuously lead the way. And so I come to you this morning and say this. Put yourself before the Lord. Pray prayers of hope. Pray prayers of love. Ask for strength. Ask for honor because your God wants to love you so much that he says, you be strong now. You have courage. Be courageous in me. Will you bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, we come to you on this day, we give to you this time so that we know that no matter what's happening, that you're there with us, that you love us. May we murmur and meditate on your words. May they be such that we get in to the scripture, that we jump in one of the Bible studies that we have at church or we start one on our own so that we too can meet with people of like minds and say, we know that God's with us. And we give that to you this morning because this is your church and in this church, we are your people. We thank you and praise you. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning can be found on page 130. We will sing verses 1 and 3 of God Will Take Care of You. Would you please stand?
Darren Talbot talked with you earlier this morning about the upcoming time to consider your annual giving to Central Trinity. And we are here to present to you a new capital campaign. Discussing financial situations is never easy, and bringing you two different financial topics on the same morning might seem a bit much. However, as you look forward to planning your giving for 2022, we wanted you to be aware of this information as well. Your annual giving to Central Trinity and this project are two separate items to consider. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Janice and she's gonna give you some of the details on the project. It was brought to our attention by our insurance agent that our windows are in need of repair. We, as the trustees, we received four quotes we reviewed those and selected the quote by Windows Creation in, to restore our windows, and they're located in Northwest Ohio. The damage you can see in the picture on the screen, there's bowing, broken leaded so and solder joints, and crumbling cement, and there are a few broken glasses. Once the project is started, the company will come and they will remove the windows from the inside if they have a storm glass. So what will remain is the storm glass window. So there's two windows like the ones over the sound booth in that vestibule, you can't see them. The top one, you can't get to from the inside. So that will be removed from the outside. If there was a storm glass, it will be removed so a plywood would be inserted in there. These windows, because there is no storm glass, would be removed and it would just be open between the two areas. Windows creation would determine the order of the windows that would be removed, but they would, um, all of them would be removed. While they're doing that, they will fabricate new storm glass frames and storm glass windows. This framing has a venting system that the existing storm glass windows do, our frame does not, which will help dissipate the heat that cre is created from the sun in there. Once they remove them, they protect them by making a frame, that uh, take them back to their studio. The lead, existing lead is removed any uh, broken glass will be repaired if possible or they will replace it with uh, as close a match as they can. But the, most of the glass that you see will be remained. Um, then once they put the new lead and solder that, they put cement that holds it tight, clean it, and then they'll reinstall them. Um, on the outside, the wood tracing will be scraped, repaired if it needs to be, primed, as, um, and then painted so it will look the same as it does now. This project is projected to take 12 to 18 months from the time they start. Um, and as I said, they will determine which windows will uh, be removed, and they'll probably do it in two different time frames. Um, and that's all I have. Typically, um, stained glass windows in churches are addressed or repaired or restored every 80 to 100 years. This sanctuary was built in 1888. So our windows have been in place without any major restoration or work done to them for 133 years. So it's time to be considering this. So I'm the one that has to talk about the financial side of this. The total project would be roughly $190,000. So when we're looking at a capital campaign, and we've done this over the years for various things, we've, used a, uh, we've done this for Parade of Progress in the past, um, we've used uh, a pledge system of $10 a week for a certain period of time. So to give you a rough idea, if you pledge $10 a week for two years, we would need 183 pledges. Now, doesn't mean that you're necessarily tied to that amount or that period of time, 
but that's to give you a rough idea of what this would be looking like. Administrative Council, in conjunction with Stewardship and Finance and the trustees, have reviewed the project. We're bringing it to you this morning. However, one of the caveats that we as a leadership body felt was necessary, that before we move forward with the project, sign any contracts, or do anything that in commits us to this project in any way, we need to have a benchmark of 65% of the funds pledged. So that's why we're coming to you at this particular time. The pricing for the project over the last, well, this has been going on for a couple of years and prices go up, but the pricing from the contractor, um, they've given us till the end of the year, guaranteed. And so we are looking at developing pledges. We're hoping that you would prayerfully consider this um, and pledge so that by mid-December, we would have some idea where we are in this process. If we reach that 65% benchmark, then we're going to move forward. If not, we're gonna to have to have another conversation. So, but right now that's where we're gonna, we're just gonna leave it at there. So, in, we've developed a brochure. Um, it has a lot of information in it. We would ask that you really read through this. Um, and in the brochure, there's also a pledge card that you can fill out. And in there, it can say, I pledge X amount of money per week for the duration of the project, or, you know, I, I just want to give an, a, a sum of money towards the project, maybe not on a weekly basis. So the pledge card is there and available for you to fill out. Um, Gail and Jack are in the back, and Pam's going to be in the church, and Janice and I will be up front with these brochures. So when we, you leave today, we would ask that you take one of these brochures, look through it, um, maybe this week, fill out that pledge card and bring it back in. We will keep you posted over these next few weeks as to what the progress is with the pledges on the, on the project and such. Um, so, not going to belabor the point anymore. We would just ask that you read through the brochure. I am going to give you this last closing thought, though. As the sun streams through our windows during Sunday worship, the sanctuary glows and warms the spirit in each of us. Our stained glass windows add to our worship experience and help to set one's thoughts on things above. They provide whole walls full of beauty, inviting us into a joyful, worshipful state. These windows represent the history and the love of our church family today and of all of those that have gone before us. This is why preserving these historical glass treasures needs to be addressed. I ask that you prayerfully consider this and pick up the information on your way out today. Thank you. Well, we appreciate you uh, sticking around and, and listening to that. We tried to save a few minutes at the end so we were able to do that. And uh, at this time though, I, I give you your, your benediction as we close. Uh, you know, all these things that uh, Kathy and Janice were talking about are a part of, you know, who we are. This, these windows, they tell a story. They tell a story of a church in 100, uh, 1988, or 1988. Well, that still would be good, but 1888 is a lot better, but that's a, that's a long time ago. And think of the people that have been in this building, seen those windows, and then gone out into the world. And uh, we, we present that to you this morning because... We think that they're an important part of our, our heritage and an uh, important part of our building, and we thank you for listening. So as you go, may you go in the, with the peace of Christ, and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid because you are a strong and courageous individual in Christ, and go and take him with you wherever you go. It was good to see you this morning. We're going to sing the doxology.